Rational exponents. Sometimes when we're in radical form, it's not as easy to work with. So if we can convert to an exponent, we can usually do a little bit more with it. So how do we convert from a radical form to a rational exponent form? If we have the rth root of f, which is a real number, and p is an integer and it happens to be the exponent, then we can rewrite it as f to the p divided by r. Now why am I using those variables? Well, p for power and r for root. And think about it. How does the flower grow? Well, we have the roots and then the flower explodes, right? So the root is on the bottom and the flower has the power on top. All right, so that's kind of being silly to try and have a way to remember how to rewrite these. So let's take a look and use this. We have 3y in parentheses. We're trying to take the fourth root of it and it's being raised to the sixth power. So keep those parentheses. And now we have to translate this into an exponent. Well, remember that the flower is powered by the roots. So the power goes on top and the root goes on bottom. The power is six, the root is four. Ooh, six fourths exponent? Why don't we reduce that? We just converted from radical form to rational exponent form. Looking at number two, it's in rational exponent. Now we have to go back to radical form. Well, 7x in parentheses to the one third. Well, one is the power and three is the root. So we'll have the cube root of 7x to the first power. Because it's to the first power, we really don't need to write that part. Do you even need me anymore? Go ahead, do three, do four. The only thing I would caution you about is make sure, for example, on number four, that you keep that 10y in parentheses. Be really clear on what each thing applies to. Here's a good reason to keep that in mind. Look at number five. Okay, four fifths, I see that exponent. Hmm, what does that apply to? Does that apply to the two y? No, it's not in parentheses. What exponent is on that negative two? Well, that's just a one. So when we go to convert this to radical form, the negative two is just negative two. It's gonna just stay that coefficient in front. But then y to the four fifths, I can convert. Do you have some way to always remember where to put the root and where to put the power? Be real careful. Think about number six and convert from radical to exponent. was not raised to the third power. A was to the first power. So A to the one half times B to the three halves. And then of course on number seven, boom, W to the two thirds. Ooh, number eight, negative three halves. Eeks. Remember, we really can't deal with negative exponents very well. So I can't convert this until it's positive three halves. Do you remember how to convert it? Exactly, it has that negative exponent and to make it a positive exponent, I have permission to move. So it's up in the numerator, I kind of bring it down to the denominator and put a one on top to hold the spot for the numerator. Now convert the denominator to radical form. Square root of d cubed. Hmm, a lot of stuff going on there. For one, I can simplify that, right? Because square root of d cubed, I have d squared times d. And then for another, I have a radical in the denominator and I need to clear that. So I'll pull a D out because square root of D squared is D, but there was one left over. So I actually have one divided by D square root of D. Now I'm not supposed to have the square root of D there. The other D all by itself is fine. I have to multiply by a creative form of one. It's a square root, so I just need two Ds. So I'm gonna multiply by square root of D over square root of D. Now keep track here. When I do that, I have square root of d in the numerator, and then I had a d on the outside already, but then I multiplied the square root of d times square root of d, so that's square root of d squared. Whew, this is getting tiring. Now I have this d to hold on to, but then this, when I simplify that square root of d squared, well that gives me another d. So my final answer is the square root of d divided by d squared. Okay, 216 to the one third power. I wanna simplify this. It's gonna be easier if I rewrite this as a radical. Okay, well, one third power. Well, the roots power the flower. So it's root on bottom, power on top. So this is a cube root 
of 216 to the 1 power. So I'm just going to write the cube root of 216. Okay, well, 216, that's just 6 cubed. We remember that from SOAP. So the cube root of 6 cubed would be 6. No problem. Let's try another one. The next one, 625 to the 1 fourth power. You got it. All right, so we get 5 there, because 5 cubed is 125 times 5 again is 625, so 5 to the 4th power. 11, negative 64 to the 2 thirds. Okay, so powers on top, roots on bottom, so it's going to be the cube root of negative 64 squared. Ew, I don't want to do negative 64 squared, so look what I can do. I can write this in an equivalent form. I can do the cube root of negative 64, and then I can say that that's all being squared. So I can put the squared on the outside. That makes my life a lot easier because the cube root of negative 64, well, 4 cubed, so I'm going to have negative 4 squared. Oh, that's so nice. Negative 4 squared is just 16, no problem. So if it's easier to write that exponent, the power on the outside, do that. All right, looking at this next one, I have 16 to the negative 2.5. I know negative 2.5 is just negative 5 halves. That way I can see that rational exponent. 16 to the negative 5 halves. Ugh, it's negative. We can't mess around with that. So let's go ahead and move that to the denominator. Put a 1 in the numerator to hold its place. So 1 divided by 16 to the 5 halves. Now we can convert that to a radical. See if you can do it. Okay, so power over root, it's going to be a square root this time to the fifth power. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as the square root of 16 all to that fifth power. So square root of 16 is just 4, and then 4 to the fifth power, I don't know that one by heart. So I'm just going to leave it as 1 divided by 4 to the fifth power. Take a moment. I really think you got this last one. For that last one, I got 1 eighth. Now remember, you had to make that exponent positive first, so I moved it down to the denominator, and then power over root, so the fifth root of 32 on that denominator, all being cubed. So in 14, I have 11 to the 1 half power times 11 to the 1 half power. So since I have that same base, 11 and 11, I know that I'm just going to add my exponents, 11 to the 1 half plus 1 half, so 11 to the 1. Now notice, my 11 did not change, right? That's my base. Now, hey, wait a minute though. I could have converted these to radicals. So the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 because one half power, power over root, square root. Um, and I can multiply those. Square root of 11 times square root of 11, square root of 121, and that's just 11. We get the same answer. Keep an eye out for those one half powers because we know those are roots like that. All right, let's look at 15 both ways. So let's try using exponent rules first. Three to the one half times 12 to the one half. Do you see a problem? I have different bases, so I can't actually just add my exponents right away, but what I can do is since they're both to the one half power, I can say 3 times 12 all to the one half power, like expanded property in reverse. So then 3 times 12 will last 36 to the one half power, power over root, so convert that to a radical, square root of 36 is 6. Cool. That was nice. Now let's try it the radical way. So I see a 1 half power on that 3 and that 12. I can right away say, oh, that's square root of 3 times square root of 12. No big deal. Then I can multiply them because their indexes are the same. Square root of 36 and I get 6. So that one, the radical way, might have actually been faster. Why don't you try 16? Choose the way. those bases were different again, I went ahead and converted them both to cube roots really quick, multiplied, got the cube root of 216, and that's 6. Looking at 17, I have negative 27x to the negative 9 all to the 1 third power. See that 1 third power? I'm like, oh, hey, that's just a cube root, so cube root of negative 27 times x to the negative 9. I can't handle that. So let's go ahead and use our power rules, and we can expand this. So I can get um, negative 27 to the 1 third power, I'm going to go ahead and put that negative 27 in parentheses, times x to the negative 9 to the 1 third power. Close by multiply, so x to the negative 9 thirds, yeah. Negative 27 to the 1 third power, I can go ahead and make that a cube root of negative 27. x to the negative 9 divided by 3, that's just going to be x to the negative 3. All right, so I still have a negative exponent issue, and then I can simplify that root as well. Cube root of negative 27. 
Well, it's a cube root, so negatives are all right. So negative three, and then x to the negative three, I wanna make that a positive exponent, so let's bring it down, x to the third. So negative three divided by x to the third. Looking at 18, oh my, the indexes aren't the same, so I can't rewrite it as a single fraction. So let's go ahead and go to rational exponent. Rational exponent, remember that just means we have a fraction for an exponent x to the 3 fourths divided by x to the 2 eighths. Really nice that 2 eighths reduces to 1 fourth, so then I can just subtract my exponents. x to the 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is x to the 2 fourths. 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. x to the 1 half is the square root of x. Number 19, similarly, we can't do this. We can't just multiply because the indexes are different. But if we go to rational exponent, maybe we can do something. The bases are the same, therefore we can add exponents. Now we need a common denominator to add 1 half plus 1 third. You see in my side note that we get 5 6. 7 to the 5 6, back to radical form, the sixth root of 7 to the fifth power. Ooh, tricky. Decimal exponents. That's okay. Let's convert to fractions and then go from there. Seems like we're stuck because 3 to the 1 half times 27 to the 1 fourth, the bases aren't the same, so I cannot just add those exponents. But wait a second. 27 is the same as 3 cubed. I can rewrite 27. 3 cubed to the 1 fourth power created a close by multiply. So then I have 3 to the 3 fourths power. The bases are now the same, so I am allowed to add exponents. 1 half plus 3 fourths. 1 half is 2 fourths. 2 fourths plus 3 fourths, 5 fourths. If I wanted to, I could go back to decimal form on the exponent. 1.25. 3 to the 1.25. And we're done.